Do not worry. There you go. That's your first don't. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet you, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the fields grows. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of those. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Three things we should not do. Number one, we should not worry. In fact, Jesus in these scriptures tells us three times, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. So if Jesus would say to us, don't worry, three times in a short Sermon on the Mount, it means that he really does not want us to worry about anything. You know, this is what I've seen in people, you know, whether you're from India, whether you live in Canada, whether you live in the United States, whether you live in any part of the world, worrying is natural to us human beings. We, we worry about a lot of things. We worry about uh, diseases. We worry about uh, uh, maybe a war. We worry about our future. We worry about what will somebody think about us. We worry about how our children will turn out. We worry about so many, so many things. But Jesus says, don't worry. Look at your neighbor and say, don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Don't be frustrated. Pastor Carlos and I were talking. Don't be frustrated about anything because God is in control of our lives. Can I hear an amen? Don't worry. Don't be anxious. Don't worry about anything. You know, worry simply pulls us in different direction. In fact, a synonym of worry is this, is anxiety. And anxiety has now become a, a psychological designation and when worry has just become out of control. And some people just worry so much that it's just become out of control. It's taken control of their life. And uh, it, it is also having this intense concern with a very limited control of the outcome of the issues that we're dealing with in our lives. And another definition is this. It is just, it, it, it means to strangle. What it can strangle you. It is like it, it crushes your spirit. It crushes your soul. It crushes our, our, our motivation. And it strangles us to the point where we are just no longer able to do anything else. And Jesus, our Savior, taught us, don't worry. Don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious. Stop worrying. You know, three times, three times he says that, don't worry about anything. In fact, worry is actually the opposite of trusting. When you trust God, you're not supposed to worry. And when you're worrying about something, no matter what it is, when you're worrying about it and you, you let it get to your head, you, you're really stopping to trust God at that point. How many of you know about this man who, who went and bought a donkey so that it can carry, its, uh, carry his hay and, then, uh, and himself? So one day, as he was uh, uh, traveling, he uh, sat on the donkey like he normally does, but then uh, as the donkey was getting older, so instead of putting the hay on the donkey, he carried the hay on his head. And people who were passing by said to him, you know, why do you sit on the donkey and instead of putting the hay on the, on the donkey, you're carrying it on your head. And the man said, it's getting old. And I don't want to be a burden to it, so I'm carrying it on my head. And sometimes when we worry about things of this world, 
That's exactly what we are doing to Jesus. We are saying, you know, Jesus, you know, I would, I would love to cast my burdens upon you, as your word says, you know, First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. You know, Jesus, I really like to cast my burdens on you, and I, I really like to do that. But guess what, Jesus? I don't want to be too much of a bother. I don't want to be too much of a pain. You know, so what? Guess what? I will carry my own burdens. I'll carry my own anxieties. I will, I will deal with it. Sometimes when we deal with our own problems in our own ways, we actually make it worse. Has that experience ever happened to you? You get an email and you just feel like, I got to deal with this, and you deal with this, and after you dealt with it is when you think like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't have responded to that. Sometimes we deal with things in our own strength, in our own frustration, in our own anger, and we just make it worse. We make it worse. You know, Jesus says, the Bible says, cast your anxieties, cast your burdens, cast your worries, cast your fears onto Jesus because he cares for you. Somebody say, God cares for me. Do you really believe that? Come on, one more time. God cares for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't worry. Don't worry about anything. You know, I come from a family of warriors. My dad used to worry about everything, you know, and uh, they're taking a video of this. <laughs> Maybe you will see this. <laughs> One day I finished preaching and uh, I went home. My dad says, you know, how come you always preach about me? <laughs> I said, all my illustrations are based on you. <laughs> he used to worry a lot, you know, and as a young kid watching him, I learned to worry. And I used to worry and, about everything, about everything. Until I came to a point in life and I realized that by worrying, I'm not making any difference. I'm actually making things worse. So uh, don't worry. Don't worry. If Jesus says don't worry, then you don't have to worry about anything. Amen? Don't worry about your future. I'm not saying be careless or be reckless. I'm saying don't carry the burden of tomorrow into today. That's what Jesus says. You know, don't carry the burden of tomorrow into today. You're not meant to do that. We were not meant to be anxious. We were not meant to carry that anxiety and the worry into our future. That's for God to deal with. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? The second thing that I don't want you or we shouldn't do is don't forget. Somebody say don't forget. First one is don't worry. Second one is don't forget. Don't forget that you're not supposed to worry. <laughs> don't forget that you're not supposed to worry. And the reason I say that is because we all know that we're not supposed to worry. I know, I preach on this all the time, that I'm not supposed to worry. We all know we're not supposed to worry. But guess what happens? We worry about it all the time. We worry about things all the time, right? And, and uh, I say this to remind you that don't worry and don't forget that you're not supposed to worry about anything, about anything. Yes, you may be going through a distressing situation. Yes, maybe the summer has not been good to you. Yes, maybe there's so many problems that you still have to deal with. Yes, maybe you still have a maxed out credit card. I, I mean, it could be anything. Yes, there, the, maybe there's a leak in your roof. There could be so many things. But remember, don't forget to not worry. Because God is still in control. Jesus looked at his, uh, uh, these people and he says, you know, look at the birds. Why would Jesus say that? When Jesus says something, there's a meaning for it. He tells these people, look at the birds, because he does not want them to forget that they're not supposed to worry. Look at the birds, he says. You know, these birds, they don't have uh, home equity. Uh, they don't have a RSP. They don't have any assets in this world. They don't have any, 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 anything. They don't even have a barn where they can store food, you know. None of that. Yet, God in heaven meets their needs. 
And God says, if God can meet the need of that little sparrow, if God can meet the needs of a little finch, if God can meet the need of a little hummingbird, you know, just look at them. The summer, you see a lot of them. You know, if God can meet the needs of these little birds that don't seem to have anything, you know, God can meet your needs. Hallelujah. Can I hear an amen? You know, God can give you that husband, hallelujah, that you've been waiting for. God can give you that dream job that you've been waiting for. God can give you that education that you've been working so hard for. God can supply all your needs according to the riches of His glory. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. God is a God who takes care of all our needs. He says, look at the birds. Just look at them, you know. This summer, we had a, a robin come and, and put a nest in our, in our deck, you know. And some reason, the, the, the nest fell down. And guess what? The next day, they just come back, and they, they're not crying. They're not calling 911. They're not calling the pastor for counseling. You know, the next day, they just go, and they pick up the pieces wherever they left off, and they start building another nest. I said, to the, I thought, you know, I want this robin in my church, you know. <laughs> they just pick up where they left off. No complaining, no nothing. And, and life just moves on for them. Jesus says, look at those birds and learn from them. There's a lesson to be learned. And Jesus says, consider the lilies. Consider the lilies. Jesus said, you know what? They're here today and they're burnt tomorrow. And even... Solomon, you know, about Solomon it said that even half of what Solomon had in his prosperity and, and, and his wealth and his wisdom were not told. Even that, that Solomon, even Solomon the Great, the richest king in, 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 in the Bible, even the richest of the richest king, even he did not wear as beautiful as these, these lilies that God has planted on, the, on our byway and on our sideway as we walk by. Yesterday, actually, it was a day before yesterday, we were at uh, St. Anne de Bellevue. And St. Anne de Bellevue, I took my, again, my cousins to go see the, those beautiful uh, lake or river that, that passes on, on that St. Anne de Bellevue, and there's a beautiful boardwalk, and, and uh, all these rich people have these big yachts parked in that, and, and we, it was amazing to see that, you know? And so we're just walking by, enjoying the weather, looking at this beautiful uh, uh, water and uh, having this experience. And, and I saw this, this beautiful, beautiful flower. And I, I said, you know what? I, know, I used to know the name of it. I said, what is the name? My, my, uh, my, my cousin likes the, these uh, plants, you know, and uh, planting and flowers and stuff like that. So I, I knew she would know. So I turned to her and said, what is the name of this? She said, these are petunias. How many of you have seen a petunia? <laughs> You know, she said, these are petunias. And, and then she said, you know, there's a story behind the petunia. I said, what is that? She said, when she was young, and uh, one day she went to collect petunia seeds from her dad's garden. She collected the petunia seeds, and then she went on the car, bringing them back home. And as she was bringing them back home, her car had an accident. And, uh, and uh, she almost did not make it. She almost died in that accident. You know, there was a huge gash on her head, and... And uh, her dad, when he heard the, that her daughter was, ha had an accident, he, he rushed towards the accident scene to go see her daughter. And uh, because of the head wound and she was not fully there, she, she was uh, starting to say something. And her dad wanted to see what her daughter would say. And she says, I don't know where my petunia seeds went. <laughs> I don't know where my seeds went. I'm looking for my petunia seeds. And her dad started to cry because here is his daughter almost about to die and she's worried about petunia seeds. Jesus said, look at that, look at that, look at that flower that I dressed up so beautifully. That I dressed up so beautifully. If I can do that for that, I can do it in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. So don't worry about what you eat or what you drink or what you would wear. I'll take care of you. And here's the segue from the petunia seeds to, to my third point, you know. Don't trust on the wrong things. Or if I would say it this way, I would say get your priorities right. Sometimes we worry about petunia seeds. 
when our father is worried about more important things in our life. We are worried about like, like carpet, for example, or, you know, every time I come here, I don't see people, I see the carpet. I'm like, when am I going to get my carpet, you know? We are worried about all these things that really don't matter, are not important, because we got our priorities wrong. And Jesus says, is not life more important than food? For the pagans run after these things. People in this world have been made to think that if you have this, if you have that, you would be happy. But reality is, no matter what you have, those things can never provide you the true joy that comes from God alone. <clears throat> you agree with me? I was watching a show called Mega Yacht, you know? Mega yacht. All these rich people have these big yachts. And, and uh, I was watching, I was like, wow, I can't believe that people actually splurge so much money on a yacht. And one of the things that, that, that they say on that is that a man's happiest day is when he buys one of those yachts. And the man's happiest day is, one, is, is the day when he actually manages to sell it off. We think that these things are going to bring us joy. We go after it. We want to impress. We want to feel that, 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 that thing that that thing can offer, but actually, eventually, you know what? It can offer nothing. It's only God that can give us the most important things that we need, peace and joy. There are people who live in a yacht and don't have peace. There are people who live in a yacht and don't have a joy. But there are people who live in, under the staircase of somebody else's home and they're the most joyful people that you could ever see. Get your priorities right. Once upon a time, the government had a vast scrapyard in the middle of a desert. So the government said, you know, someone might steal this scrap because the scrap is important, it's, it's valuable. So uh, they decided to have a night watchman hired, and they paid him $18,000 uh, to watch the scrapyard at night every day. And then they realized, hey, wait a minute, you know, who's going to give instruction to this watchman, night watchman? And they decided to hire a planning department and uh, they hired two people. One was to write the instructions, and the other one was to do studies about what this night watchman should be doing by protecting that scrapyard. So they hired two people. And then they realized, you know, wait a minute, you know, uh, who's going to make sure that these two people are doing a good job? So they went and hired a quality control department, and they hired two more people. And they were, these two people were supposed to write reports to the government and, and tell them how these two people were doing their planning job. And then they realized, wait a minute, you know, who, who's to tell that the, any of these people are, are there doing their job? So they went and hired a, a timekeeper. And then they realized, wait a minute, we've got to pay these people. So they went and hired a payroll officer. And then they, uh, then they realized, wait a minute, now we got like 10 people working at the scrapyard. We need to have an administrative section. And they hired three more people. One was an administrative officer, an assistant administrative officer, and then they had a legal secretary. And then the government realized that they have spent way too much money on the scrapyard. So they fired the night watchman to save $18,000. <laughs> They, the whole reason was to protect the scrapyard. And now they have this whole group of people who are working there who have no influence on protecting the scrapyard. I say this to say that many a times we are not sad or anxious or worrying about the more vital things. We are worrying, worrying about things that are really supposed to be not even on our priority list. We worry about things that are not important. We worry about things that are not important. And Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Can I hear an amen? amen. 
Hallelujah. Worry about that. Worry about your holiness. Worry, worry about your righteousness. Worry about, uh, about, you know, I mean, don't worry about that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you understand what I'm trying to say. You know, seek that. You know, pay attention to the important things. When was the last time you were kind to somebody? When was the last time you gave something to somebody? When was the last time you gave to missions? When was the last time you, you, you went to your pastor and said, Pastor, you know what, I have a burden in my heart to be a blessing to somebody. You know, when was the last time we did any of those things? And God says, you know, pay attention to that. All these things that you worry about, you know, I'll, I'll supply. Isn't it supposed to be God shall supply all my needs? according to his riches and glory. He says, I will take care of all those things. Matthew 6, 34, he says, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. In this life, you will have trouble. You will have people who disappoint you. You will have people who will abandon you. You will have people who say to you one thing and then will change your words and who will accuse you of different things. In this world, you will have all those things happen to you. In this world, you will have people who will let you go off of jobs. You may lose your job. You may lose your benefits. You may lose things. But guess what? We don't live based on the opinions of somebody else. We don't live based We live because my God can supply 